Hey guys! Alright, so this is kind of tour snippet five. Um, and I say kind of because if you go to the podcast, it's going to sound a little bit different because I lost it. I mean, I didn't lose it in the podcast, but I lost it on the video part. So um, I'm kind of redoing it and I'm probably not going to sound the same, but we're going to cover the same information hopefully. But if you are listening um, by podcast, it's going to be a tad different. Alright, so let's look really quick. We had ended on, uh, well, we're going into chapter two of Genesis. We had ended with the sixth day done. Um, And if we remember in chapter one, verse 31, it says, And Elohim saw all that he had made, and see, it was very good. Very good because it was done. All of creation was finished. It was complete. Chapter 2, verse 1 says, Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their array, meaning everything housed when the heavens and the earth were done. So, a giraffe had a big neck, it wasn't being changed. Hippopotamus is fat and round, it wasn't being changed. The Lord said on the end of the sixth day, everything that was created, it is very good. It's done. And so then we move into chapter 2, which is, the seventh day. Now let's look at verse 2 of chapter 2. And in the seventh day, Elohim completed his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day for all his work, which he had made. So basically, the idea, time, um, uh, I think of time, time was completed. Because in the seventh day, it is rest. We do not see where it says, um, the seventh day, I mean, and this was the seventh day. In other words, he says, in the seventh day, he set it apart. That's in chapter, uh, verse 3. It says, and Elohim blessed the seventh day and set it apart because he rested from all his works, which Elohim in creating had made. So he's resting from his creation. So at the end of the sixth day, at sunset of the sixth day, we go into the seventh day and he was done. Nothing else was going to be completed. But like I was saying, and come back to it. What he doesn't say is, and the seventh day, and it was done. The seventh day is a rest day. It's the Sabbath. It actually didn't end. Its wording is different. He says he has a seventh day, and he blessed it. Well, think about it. What else did he bless? He blessed um, the fish and the birds to multiply. He blessed man to multiply. And now he's blessing the seventh day to reign per se. The seventh day was set apart, meaning set holy, blessed. So in the in the blessing, how do I say this? When he gave the blessing to the fish and the birds, they control that domain. The birds basically run the air, the sea fish and monsters basically run there. Man doesn't. Man doesn't live in the air and he doesn't live in the in the water, right? Then we have man being given in um, chapter, what is that? Chapter 1, verse uh, 28, um, where man is given dominion, right? He's told, and I apologize. No, that's right, 28. Be fruitful and multiply. He's, He's given dominion, basically, of the land, okay? But here we have the seventh day, which is being blessed, and in a, in a weird way, The seventh day rest that's going to continue is given, it's set up to, I won't say to have dominion, but it's set up to rule the rest of the time in rest in the Lord. But then man screws that up and then we we don't have Shabbat, we don't have rest continually. But the Lord still gives us every seventh day to be a reminder of what is going to come. Think about these seven days millenniums, and we're going to talk about that later too, but these seven millenniums, these seven days also correspond with the millennium. So at the end, we're going to have rest. We're going to end up where the seventh day, the rest actually is going to have dominion on time and space in the end. But, all right, so he gives the seventh day to us um, and sets it apart. If we want to go back and go, well, the Jews got the Sabbath, think he's given this to Adam and Eve, which every single mankind is in the loins of Adam and Eve. Every single one. So if he's giving them 
And not just mankind, he's given it to the animals, he's given it to the birds, he's given it to the waterfowl, waterfowl, that's a bird, to those in the sea. Everything is going to experience that rest. Everything is supposed to experience that rest because all nature gives glory to God, right? Psalms 19, the heavens do, right? Even what Yeshua says, look, if you people don't cry out, the stones are going to cry out. I mean, literally everything created by God recognizes him. Even the rebellious aspects of nature that after the man's fall, that it rebelled, it still recognized who he is. That's why they're rebelling against him. So as it says in the end, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that he is Lord and he's creator. We're going to see that. Um, okay, so <clears throat> let's move down. It says in 2 verse 4, And these are the births of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that Elohim, it says Yove Elohim, made the heavens and earth. Let's talk about that real quick. Here we have the merciful God. Remember, Elohim is the idea of a judge, the creator, right? The all-powerful and mighty. There's really no idea, aspect of maybe mercy in that. But now that we're going to talk about in chapter 2, we're going to start to talk about man. He adds his merciful one, Yove, the one who he reveals himself. And that is the Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey, that we see again. in Well, we see it throughout scripture. Um, but it definitely, he introduces himself again like that in Exodus 3 to Moses to tell the people who he is because it goes all the way back to the merciful one from the very beginning. So he's saying right here, all right, now it's not just Elohim. Chapter one told the story. Now let's go to chapter two. And now it's Yove Elohim. It's showing the merciful part of God. And then it says, it also says here, and the births are, some of your Bibles may say, the generations of the heavens and earth. Okay, generations. There's something really cool about that word. In the Hebrew, that word has two valves. Now, remember, we've talked about this before. The valve can mean, in the Hebrew language, can mean a hook. It can be a nail. It can also represent a man. So it's representing Messiah, Yeshua. I mean, everything in, right, the whole volume of the book, the entire word of God points to who Messiah is, to who Yeshua is. So we have right here two valves. This is the perfect generations. I mean, this is God created, hands involved all the way through. This is the perfect generations. The reason why that's significant is when we get to Genesis 5, when it's Adam's generations, there's a valve missing because he's fallen. We don't see this word, toldot, generations, spelled again with two valves until Ruth 4, when the line of David is established through Ruth, right? So you have Naomi's um, family through Boaz and Ruth. When they get married, they have a child. Um, and then it goes down, I think it's 10, seven or 10 generations. I don't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, it goes down to Jesse, which is uh, David's father. Because that has two valves because David is the prototype, for lack of a better word, of the kingly representation of Messiah. And since Yeshua, as that valve, remember the valve that's also missing from the perfect light in Genesis 1.14? Here we have it missing again from the generations. Well, when he comes, John 1, right, as the light of the world, when he comes, he is fulfilling the valve missing from 1.14 and the valve missing from um right here from the generations. Okay, so let's move on. So it says in uh, 2.5, now no shrub of the field was yet on the earth and no plant of the field had yet sprung up for Yove Elohim had not sent rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground. But a mist went up from the earth and watered the entire surface of the ground. Okay. It is a most common thought that it had never rained before the flood. And they take it from this verse. The only problem is when we put this verse actually in context, this is the beginning of the generations, right, of the heavens and the earth. This is when 
no man was on the ground yet to till. There was no need for rain because there wasn't an encouragement for this to grow. We're going back to day one light, day two, the separation of the spheres, day three, right here. It says no plant of the field had yet sprung up. Well then, is this even at day three? Because if you have day three, everything came up. So this is telling me right here, day three isn't even complete yet. Again, this is the generations of heaven and earth. This is their coming up. Well, right here, no shrubs in the field or on the earth, no plant in the field yet. That tells me it's day one or day two, but there's no day three here yet. It says, for Yovei had not sent rain on the earth, okay, and there was no man to till the ground. Again, this right here is going through the generations, generation one, day one, day two. We're not at day three yet. That's why. It says, but a mist went up from the earth and watered the entire surface of the ground. Oh, wait a minute. Remember when all the water was sucked in, right? Day two, the expanse, and day three, the water was sucked in first, and then the things came out. And by things, I mean the seeds, the, the plants. Then the Lord called up in his words, come up, pecan tree, come up, uh, shrub, box shrub. Come up. Okay, I'm just making up, you know, names because I don't know. Those are real names. But what I mean is, you know, he's speaking. And in his words, as he says, come up plants, come up trees, come up. As he does that, they're coming up out of the ground, out of this moisted ground. Okay. It says, but the mist went up from the earth and watered the entire surface of the ground. Okay. Now, verse 7 jumps to... And the Lord formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the lives of the man um, became a living being. Now, obviously, a few days happen between 6 and 7, right? Again, let's look. This is to help show us what's going on. And we're going to talk about that more here in the next one. But, again, we have right here, well, let me say this. In chapter 7, we have God with both hands. In the word form, there's two yodes in that. A yod means hand in Hebrew. We have two yodes in the word formed where God is literally putting his hand in the dirt and forming man. Think about this. This is the generations of heaven and earth, right? The waters of the expanse for both get to participate. I'm just saying. It gets to participate. We have the waters that come to the ground. There's a moist, uh, mist that comes up that's watered the ground. This is telling us that even when the Lord goes to form man with his two hands, the earth is moist. There's no man there. So from day three, day four, day five, day six, there's no rain. There's no rain. But that seems to really encapsulate the time, fear, uh, time period there. There's nothing that says it never rained again. If rain is a blessing that the Lord sends on the good and the wicked, I find it difficult to really think it would have never rained and the first time he introduced rain would be as a curse. I, that doesn't follow the patterns. The way the patterns are is he presents something lovingly and then it gets used differently. So I I know that there's the greenhouse effect, and we say that's the water that fell. And absolutely, I wouldn't argue that. I mean, there's absolutely was something different with our atmosphere before the flood, 100%. They say the oxygen was thicker, absolutely. But I think there's more going on. I don't think that it was impossible to rain. I think that the Lord still sent rain. Again, that's just me. That's just something to make us really think, because I think sometimes we hear things and just go, yeah, that's it, that's it. And we never go to question it. We never actually go read the word. So. All right, we are going to end on that part, and um, I'll see you for snippet six sure, uh, shortly. All right, bye.